Hello and welcome to part 6 of the rock sculpting tutorial. In this part I'll be adding all of the render passes to Photoshop and create a final edit. I will mostly keep the post edit work to mask and procedural edits and try not to go full on paint over. So it should be very beginner friendly. Basically you could do what I'm about to do by texturing the scene. But since I'm only making a one frame render, this way is faster and gives me more control. But yeah, you could just as well texture the scene if you want to keep it 100% 3D. This workflow also allows us 3D artists to get 2D-ish results without actually needing the skills of a traditional 2D artist, as the techniques I'll be using are very similar to those used when texturing. So let's get started. As you can see, I have already added and named all of the render passes. Let's add a base background layer. Creating separate folders for the ground and rocks. There will be a lot of layers in the end, so to not get lost, it's always good to structure and properly name all of your layers. I always do this in the beginning, but I'm sure the further I get into it, you will start seeing me sheet a lot. Now I'll use the magic wand tool on the ID pass to create masks for the folders, so that any layer that I put into either the ground or rocks folder will only affect those parts of the image. This makes it a lot easier and faster than creating separate masks for each layer. You could just click the ground ID to select it, but since some parts of it isn't connected, it's better to right click and go to color range. With the color range, you can select a specific color and all parts of the image with that color will get selected, even if they are not connected. Once I have the selection, I only need to select the ground folder and press the create mask button, and it automatically creates a mask out of the selection. For the rocks folder, I'll just create a mask from the whole scene and use the ground mask to fill those parts with black. Creating a new layer to use as a base color for the rocks and the ground. I'm adding it outside of the groups since I want it to affect both of the groups. Adding a random color, setting the blending mode to multiply, changing the color with the hue and saturation adjustment tool. To enter the tool, press Ctrl plus U. Sorry for switching between saying folders and groups. The correct term is groups, but since they look like folders, I always end up calling them folders. Creating a group for ambient occlusion. To create the mask, I will paste the ambient occlusion pass into the folder mask, then invert it by pressing Ctrl plus I. Most might just multiply the ambient occlusion pass on top of the main render, but by creating its own folder and using the ambient occlusion as a mask, I can add any layer or color, which gives me a lot more control. Creating a base color layer for the ground. With this next layer, I will create some color variation to the ground. If you double click a layer, the layer option window opens up. Here you can use the sliders to blend the layer with the underlying layers to create interesting details. To get smoother transitions, you can hold the Alt key while using the sliders. With this technique, you can create interesting details with little to no work. I often add two of these layers, one for darker details and one for brighter details. 
creating the same type of layers for the rocks. As you can see, I go back and forth a lot to do adjustments. Not so much to talk about during these parts, so I'm speeding those parts up a lot. If you like the effect on some parts, but not on others, you can use to add a mask to the layer and mask out the parts that you don't want it to affect. Next I'll be using the curvature pass. I'm adding the curvature pass as the mask to a new layer. Now I can add any color I want to the layer. I want to adjust the levels of the mask. To do that I can hold the ALT key and left click on the mask. Now you should see the mask in your viewport. To return you can hold the ALT key and left click on the mask again. To adjust the levels of the mask you can press CTRL plus L. I'm using levels to contract the edge details from the curvature to get smaller and finer details. Adding another color layer to the ground. For this one I want to add some blue to the darker parts of the ground. I fill the mask with black, so I can paint out with white where I want it to show. Creating a curvature layer for the ground, same as for the rocks. Going back to the red color variation layer for the ground, I'm gonna duplicate it and mask the duplicated layer to the right. Since the current layer doesn't add any information there due to the current blending settings. So by creating duplicated layers and masking them to specific areas and readjusting the blending sliders, I can add similar details to any part of the scene. Next I will do the same for the rocks, but on a bigger scale. Since every rock has a different distance and value, I will most likely have to create a new detail layer for each rock cluster. Going back to darken and adjust the ground. Adding more color variation to the ambient occlusion. Adjusting the blending settings for the rock detail layers. Next I'll be working on the background. I'll be using a cloud brush to add clouds or fog to the background. I'm gonna look into adding the brush to the free downloadable content. If I can't do that, I will add a link to where you can get it. I'm also using the cloud brush as an eraser and go back and forth until I get a result that I'm satisfied with. I want to create a rim light effect to the rocks, so I duplicate the main layer 
and select the underlying layer. Go into blending options and add outer glow. This will create a thin outline to the edges of the rocks. I will come back to it later and add a mask to the outline layer so that it will be more subtle in some areas. I'm adding a levels adjustment layer to the top of the layer stack as I want to brighten the whole scene. When doing this, some parts might get too bright, so I have to readjust some layer values to balance it out. I'm also adding a color balance adjustment layer. I often use this to change the overall tone and atmosphere of an image. It also helps you balance the colors of the layers, making it less likely for some parts or colors to stick out unintentionally. As you can adjust highlight and shadow colors separately, you can do very specific adjustments. Jumping back on the outline layer to mask out some parts of it. Going back to the background fog to do some adjustments. Also creating a new fog layer to the top of the layer stack to add some fog to the foreground. Usually I always try to cover up the edges of a center composition like this one. Either by the use of fog like with this one or with darker gradients or depth of field. It helps push the focus to the center and usually improves the overall look. Duplicating another ground detail layer to add some finer highlight details. I'm going back and forth between adjusting the layer blending options and the adjustment layers to try and improve on the overall look. I'm creating a brighter color gradient layer to the background by using a gradient tool. Adding background gradients is a great way to quickly and easily add interest and improve on your art. I want to decrease the contrast for the rocks, so I'm creating another ambient occlusion layer with a brighter color. I'll also add a mask to the layer so I can keep some of the darker areas. As you can see, I'm getting this banding effect from the gradient. To make this less obvious, I will create a new overlay layer and check the 50% gray box. Then I'll add noise to it. Overlaying noise on top of an image like this helps reduce problems such as banding and also gives it more of a cinematic look. Going back to work on the background. I 
I ended up spending a lot of time adjusting the background fog. It's one of those parts I can't really see if it's looking good or not. So I ended up spending a lot of time going back and forth, changing my mind. I'm adding an out of focus ground to the horizon as the background was looking a bit empty. Duplicating the rock's ambient occlusion color layer and also adding a black mask to it. With this layer I can now paint with white in the mask on areas I want to brighten or highlight. I'm creating a different type of highlight layer for the rocks using the layer blending option sliders. I'm trying to add brighter fog that contrasts with the rock and makes it pop more. I have been saying fog or clouds this whole time, but I guess sand or dust would probably be a better description. Very close to calling this done now. As a final touch I'm going to add some birds to the image. If you google isolated birds you will have a lot of free images to choose from, so I won't bother adding any links to this in the contents file. I make a couple of copies and place them out randomly. To avoid it looking like exact copies, I'm going to delete some of the birds from the image. I'm adding a color gradient to the birds. Looking at the light angle, it's not really correct lit, but I think it makes it look more interesting. I'll also add an edge highlight to the birds, similar to what I did for the rocks. Also creating a mask so I can make it look like the birds are hit by the light from the left. I'm not going to add anything new at this point only making some final touches to the overall colors and edge highlights, trying to balance it. I'm not sure if I managed to achieve the look I was going for, but I wanted to give the image a cold but warm look, with the bluish colder shadows contrasted by the red lighting from the morning sun. So I'm going to call this done now. In case you felt it was hard to follow the Photoshop part of the tutorial, I'm adding the Photoshop file to the contents file, so feel free to check it out. 
and as mentioned during the tutorial. You can also get the module rock, the alpha brushes and the full sculpt for free with the contents file. I have also added a document that contains links to all other tools and plugins I have mentioned during the tutorial. Download it from the link in the video description. As for the project itself, overall I'm quite satisfied with the result. If I were to start over, I would probably choose a different camera angle that show more of the ground up close and then add some foreground depth of field. That would have helped add depth to the image. There is of course a lot that could be improved on and that is always the case. But I hope you found this tutorial useful in some way and I really appreciate you watching until then. Thank you. Thank you.